I did this a few weeks ago, but I think it's already time to once again reach back in time instead of the pile behind me. I would found some footage that I would actually recorded horizontally of me turning a really cool old willow log into a vase. It's got a ton of chatoyancy in this, so stay tuned for that. So the footage is already ready to go. There's not a whole lot I can do other than what's been done a year ago, and I thought this would be a perfect opportunity for you guys to just ask me some questions and I can answer them in the narration of the video. I posted just this morning requesting you all to, to throw some questions my way, and you came through. So let's jump right to it. Let's answer some of your most burning questions about me. Okay, all right, my legs are tired. What's in that pile? This is a cool log. We have a section where we've got like four or five different branches. Limbs have been pruned off at various stages of the tree's life a long time ago. Anyway, this should have a bunch of cool stuff in it. Let's throw it on the lathe and find out. Before we launch into the Q&A portion of this video, let me start with a little background on this project. My next door neighbor had cut down one of his trees that had died, and while the tree removal service was at work, I, I asked him if I could have some of the wood, which was just destined for the chipper. They were more than happy to give me as much as I wanted, and whenever I get my hands on a new species of wood, I always want to turn that thing into a vase first. Now, my neighbor wasn't sure what kind of tree it was. His best guess was a willow, which once I started working with the wood, I also felt pretty confident about. But there are hundreds of species of willows, so this is about as detailed on the tree facts as I'm gonna get. So good thing you guys came through with the questions for me. Let's dive into them. How long has the pile been around and how many different types of wood do I think are in it? Also Mossy Stone, thank you for the compliment. Okay, the pile has lived many lives. It's been a wood pile on the side of the house. It's been some scattered logs on the floor of my garage. The current iteration or the semi neatly stacked wall pile has been there for probably about a year and a half, but yeah, I've been collecting wood like a curious little scrounger for about five years now. How many different kinds of wood? Great question. Uh, hang on, let me, let me go check that out. Okay, including the shelf of chaos, I'd say between 75 and 80 different species of trees, uh, though I got lazy about moving pieces of wood around, so it could be more, it could be less. All right, you're interested in hearing about my music taste. Uh, I like a lot of stuff, but I'll be honest, I'm mostly just a pretty cliche middle-aged white dude and that I love The National. Their new album is tremendous. Radiohead, Sigur Rós, Phoebe Bridgers, Bon Iver, just, just sad dad music in general is really my thing. I've been on a real Bruce Springsteen kick lately. Cat Stevens, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. I've also always been like really into the whole Lilith Fair vibe. Give me some Indigo Girls, Jewel, Alanis Morissette, Randy Carlyle, all that great stuff. I also really dig movie and TV show soundtracks. I'm a big Max Richter guy. I don't know, I like a lot of stuff, uh, just most of it's not really what anyone would call surprising. Some rapid fire questions here, we love to see it. I got a lot of things that I like to do to unwind. For one, I, I really love movies. I've got a pretty wide ranging taste and just love watching something new and discussing it with my other film friends, so that's a big one. Trail running and just exploring nature, of course. I, I just started to try climbing this year and I've been enjoying that so far. I'm also getting super into birds, so yeah, there, there's another one. Favorite food, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just too indecisive for that. I really wanna travel to so many places, like send me anywhere, I, I wanna see it all. Tons of international travel, obviously, like that, you name a country, I want to go there. And then also I just really love getting in my car and, and driving somewhere different, uh, exploring the corners of my own state that I don't think about. I find that really fun. Finally, college was kind of a mixed bag. It, it's where I came out of my shell. I was really shy in high school. I didn't have a lot of friends and college is where that first started to change. I made a lot of really great friends there. I did a lot of fun extracurricular stuff. That All of that part was awesome. I loved it. The school side, though, if I'm being honest, wasn't great. I wanted to be a writer from the time I was a kid. Like, I just knew I wanted to write novels in particular. But I convinced myself that was unrealistic, so I forced myself into a path that felt more practical and took a bunch of classes that I had no real interest in at all. So that side was always tough, really boring and unfulfilling. So yeah, mixed bag, but a lot of great memories. All right, is this my full-time job? Is this the only way I get money? Do I sell any of my work? And would that be enough income without YouTube or other content uh, revenue streams? Also, Mushroom Man, thank you for your words as well. They, they really do mean a lot. Okay, I get this question and questions like it a lot. And yes, my full-time job for about the past year has been as a content creator. I had an office job in marketing for over a decade and quit my job in early 2021 after experiencing some pretty heavy burnout. I'd wanted to do something more creatively minded my entire 
entire life. And with 40 rapidly approaching, I had this moment where I was like, you're this burnt out and for what? If you're gonna go for it, go for it now. So yeah, I quit my job with no backup plan. I started living off my savings and picked up some freelance marketing gigs to help pay the bills as well. And then just gave myself a bunch of free time to try different stuff. One of the things I started doing just for fun was making Instagram and TikTok videos about trees, which was a passion that I had developed a few years earlier. In these videos, I just go up into the mountains and talk about the native trees here in my area. And I started incorporating some of my other hobbies into that, like foraging, woodworking, cooking, baking, etc. And then my TikTok channel actually started to blow up. And once I started making the state tree map, it, it really went to the next level. And I was able to sell enough merch from that project, like state tree stickers and the map poster, that I was able to quit my freelance gigs and just focus full time on content creation. And yes, from time to time, I would sell some of my handmade items, but really it was the merch sales that allowed me to do this full time. So when those merch sales started to really slow down at the beginning of this year, that's when I started focusing really hard on YouTube, since that's the the thing I like doing most is making content, storytelling, sharing my passions about trees, all that stuff. I really don't see myself as a woodworker. I do sell some of my stuff and it's a hobby, but I've never been interested in trying to do that full time or make woodworking my primary income source. I much prefer to put my effort into this wider range of content, getting out into cool places and showing you all the cool things that trees can do, the neat stuff you can make out of them, whether it is woodcraft or foraging, cooking, baking, crafting, so much more. So yeah, the best way you can help me is by doing what you're doing now, which is watching this video. So thank you so much. All right, this leads us nicely to this question, which is what are some good resources for people wanting to learn about trees in their area? There are a lot of great resources online. Obviously, Wikipedia is not a bad first start. There's some helpful stuff in there, especially when you start diving into their cited sources. The Forest Service has some detailed reports on lots of different types of trees. But for staying really specific to the native trees in, say, your state, I found that local universities, particularly those in your state noted for their agricultural programs, often have really great resources. But yeah, anyone in the comments feel free to chime in with some of your favorite tree sources. Share with the rest of us. I'd like to know myself. My general story. Where did I get into woodworking and all this other stuff? Uh, I've told this story a few times, so I'll try to make it brief. Good luck. But it all started with me falling in love with trees. Again, this is why I don't see myself as a woodworker, just working with wood being one of the outgrowths of my fascination with trees. All right, so I really like to trail run, and that used to be the core number one hobby I had. And one day while out on the mountain, I ran past this tree that caught my eye for kind of the first time. It was a tree I'd passed countless times before, but for whatever reason this time, it really grabbed me. I stopped and looked at it, like really looked at it. It's leaves, it's cool fuzzy seeds, it's gnarled trunk and ragged bark. I was captivated and I was kind of bummed that I didn't know what kind of tree it was. It was all over the mountains I loved and I didn't even so much as know its name. So I got home and did a bunch of Googling and finally found that the tree was the Circocarpus latifolius, the curlleaf mountain mahogany. And no, it's not related at all to the mahoganies that you're probably thinking of. This is a scrubby desert tree that's native to the American West and not these large, gorgeous tropical trees that have the mahogany wood you're thinking about. But yeah, I was stunned by all the cool facts I was learning about this tree, where it grew and why, the traditional indigenous uses, the modern uses, its wood and how it was really hard and dense and pretty. And I wanted to see what that would look like. So I found a dead limb, brought it home and cut into it and I was hooked. That turned into me wanting to try to learn more about other native trees, see what their wood looks like, forage from those trees to see what they taste like, fun ways to use them in cooking and baking. But at the core of it was always a deep curiosity about the trees native to the places we call home. Do I have any tattoos? Well, this one's fun because I actually just got my very first tattoo two weeks ago and it's directly related to the story I just told. Since I'm just in voiceover tour mode right now, here's a picture from right after the tattoo was finished. It's it's an old diagram of Circocarpus letifolius that I found from a book from the 1800s and had a local artist translate into a new piece and I'm just the most happy with it. All right, this question, uh, how did I grow such a beautiful mustache? First of all, thank you. Honestly, the mustache began as a joke. I'd had a beard for a really long time. My, my then partner really liked me with a long beard especially, which I always maintained never looked as good as I, I, as I wanted it to. I always had just the most beard envy of people with good facial hair. Then one day while on a family vacation, my brother-in-law shaved his beard down to a mustache as a joke, and I thought it'd be fun to join in on that. So I went and shaved my, my pretty 
pretty long beard down to a mustache. And it was basically just kind of like a haha look, I have a mustache now. But the immediate reaction from just about everyone in my life was, you know what, that actually really works for you. And the more time I spent with it, the more it was kind of undeniable. Now, my girlfriend was still one of the holdouts. She didn't like it. So I grew the beard back in. But after we broke up, I shaved my beard back into a mustache, honestly, like within a week of her moving out. And it's really funny to me now that for millions of people, this is the only way they know me. If you had all the time and materials in the world, what overly ambitious project would you attempt? This one's easy. I'd get out and show you all these trees in their element. Meet and talk to the real experts, the researchers, scientists, makers, chefs, foragers, anyone out there who has a relationship with cool trees. Have them introduce me to the trees they love and show me and you why those trees are so cool. Okay, this question, great one. Do I consider the things I do as art and what does art mean for me? I feel this one. Especially since, again, I know most of you think of me as a woodworker, but to me, this is a hobby and just a piece of the content that I'm making here. But still, yeah, I really struggled with this, knowing that true artists and woodworkers were gonna be seeing the stuff that I made. And yeah, it's, it's really easy to knock yourself down before you let yourself try anything. But to me, art isn't about skill. It's not about how good you are at something or how objectively good something is when you're done with it. It's, it's not something you can check off on a bunch of lists to know if it's art or not. If you've got something to express, something to say, something to make or show, to me, that's art. Just go do it. Don't compare yourself to anyone or anything. Don't get bogged down on whether or not it's going to make any money. Just make. I had a pretty cool experience after I quit my job where I went down to the San Rafael Swell, which is this desert region in central Utah, and I was wandering around thinking about exactly this stuff. I was really beating myself up, asking myself, who are you to think you can get away with quitting a quote unquote real job and trying something creative? I don't have any real skills. I didn't study trees. I'm not a scientist. I'm certainly not an artist. During all this, I ended up climbing up into this old juniper tree, just this gorgeous giant thing growing out in the middle of nowhere. And I'm sitting up in this limb having all this negative self-talk and I just had this moment where I almost felt like the tree kind of scolded me. It was almost like it was like, hey man, you pull me out of this desert and put me into a gallery in the middle of Manhattan or Paris and I'm just the most exquisite work of art around, right? Well, you think I'm sitting here worried if someone calls me an artist or not? Like, do you think I need that validation? No, I'm just doing what I'm doing. And so yeah, that sounds hokey and trite, but honestly, it was impactful then and it remains impactful now. Just be you. Do the things that excite you. Chase the things that make you curious. And if what comes out of that is something you want to share with others, go for it. But you don't have to do that either. This feels like a good place to stop. You're all probably super tired of my voice by now anyway. Plus, who, who can even pay attention when the oil is doing this to the wood right now? I mean, look at all this color and chatoyancy in here. Now we get to part it off the lathe. And would you look at that? This is why this hobby is so fun for me, being able to take a piece of wood from a tree I have seen my entire life, willow trees, and finally get to see what this wood looks like. I mean, look at this. It's also really fun to give a base like this to my neighbors for them to be able to have a piece of this tree they had to cut down in their home forever. Thanks to all of you who submitted some really awesome questions for this video. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't get a chance to get to all of them, but maybe we'll do it again in a future one. For now, we'll see you all next time when we find out... What's in that pile?